Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to discuss um, Mayor of Easttown. It's going to be a quick review, a quick recap of episode three, enter number two. Because a lot of stuff was going on here. Okay, so Lori rel relays just theory to Mayor about Frank and Erin. Okay, now she goes over to Frank's house immediately and confronts him. OK, he admits he was close. He admits that he was close to Aaron than previously stated, but denies any sexual relations or involvement with the murder. OK. Dylan survives his shooting. Kenny thought he killed him, but obviously not. Kenny was found by his friends laid out on the rocks by the creek, by the river, um, laid out. And he yells, hey, I got him, I got him. He gets down to the police station. He tells Mayor he killed him. And Mayor said, well, he's not dead. He survived the shooting. But he did shoot him. So what they're going to do with Kenny, I have no idea. Um, but they're going to do something with him. Um, and so Mayor, she gathers paternity tests from both Frank and Dylan. Okay. Aaron's finger was is missing from a defensive gunshot wound is found in a local park where Mayor recovers a bullet. Okay. The park is identified as the kill site. With Erin dumped in the river the river afterwards, Erin's phone records reveal that her last phone call was from um Deacon Mark. Okay, now while Mark is cooperating with, you know, with the police and he claims he was counseling Aaron around that time of you know in a time of need and a time of crisis that's why the phone call was so late because she had called him for some advice or some help or something so Zabel uncovers records that the church had him transferred to East Town for unknown reasons now let me tell you something about these transfers because Another video I have coming soon. I'm just trying to word it, but it's going to be about the church and these priests and these then going transfers because when they get these transfers, they always say for unknown reasons. If it's not BS, then why you can't put down what he was transferred for? No, I think he was transferred because he was messing around with somebody in the church. Okay, messing around with somebody young. It got to the um to the diocese. And guess what? He had got a transfer to keep everything. They move silently. They try to move um, without bringing any attention to them. You get what I'm saying? I've watched a lot of cases about stuff like this. And it's never anything good. It's never anything good. They try. They put unknown on the records. Okay, they try to make it very hard for you to get information about the priest that is, that's in the... the um, how, what do you call it? Oh. That's in their circle. That's what I'm going to use. But I always had a feeling. When I laid eyes on Deacon Mark, I had a weird feeling about him. I had a weird feeling about Deacon Mark. And my feeling still stands. And I think he is the one that did it. And if he wasn't the one that did it, he's working with somebody that did it. That's what I think. And in this episode, I am very, very upset with Mayor. I'm very pissed off with her. But we'll get into that later. So... Um, you know, it was for unknown reasons and Mark stopped speaking to the police. Okay. So now he don't want to talk to the police at all. Mark is later shown removing Erin's bike from his car and throwing it in the river. Why do he have her bike? Why is he throwing it into the river? These are questions that you got to ask yourself while you are watching this. Okay. So Mia goes on a date with Richard. And it was so funny how how her mother and Richard, how she was talking to Richard and Mayor was getting agitated. That family is so dysfunctional. It's ridiculous because the F-bombs that Mayor and her mother were giving each other, it was like, what in the heck is going on? But you know what? Her mother is kind of right. You know, her grandson, whether she likes it or not, you know, is going to end up having to go with his mom. You know, and but what she did was wrong, but we'll get into that. I have a habit of jumping from <laughs> when I get excited about something, I have a habit of jumping from one to the next. So let's finish with this. Okay, so 
miracles on the day with Richard, like I said. Um, Shaban works on a documentary about her brother, Kevin, for a school project. Okay, she grows fed up with her girlfriend, um, Becca's irresponsible behavior. When her excessive marijuana use derails the, their band set at a college radio station. She later agrees to go on a date with Ann, the station DJ. Mayor runs into a drunken Zabel at the bar. And that scene was hilarious because he's all over the place. Okay. Who vents about his life disappointments and unsuccessful propositions. And I'm sorry, unsuccessfully propositions Mayor. I was wondering what he was trying to do. I was like, wait a minute. Is he up here trying to hit on Mayor? And she's like just blowing him off completely, not even giving him a thought. But yeah, it happened. All right, so here we go. This is the part I really can stand. So she was trying to prevent Carrie from gaining custody of Drew, which is her grandson. Drew is belongs to Carrie and Kevin. Mayor plants heroin from the evidence room in her car. How stupid can you be, Mayor? How dumb can you be? So stupid. You didn't think no one's going to find out? Chief Carter immediately catches on to the ploy and puts Mayor on administrative leave. I don't feel, you know, I don't feel, I understand her reasons why she don't want her grandson to be with Carrie. I get that. I understand. But if she is showing improvement, if she has been clean, that is her child. Eventually, she's going to have to go with the mom. Now, if what they could do is work out a system where mayor have visitation rights, you know, but mayor is going about things all wrong. She jeopardized her job just to set up Carrie so that Carrie wouldn't get Drew. That's insane to me. Now, let's talk about the funny thing when it was at the fair. <laughs> I forget that lady's name. The old lady who was talking about the guy who was getting his face painted at the fair. <laughs> See that he killed somebody in Florida. Well... <laughs> He knew that lady was talking about him. I mean, come on now. He knew. He heard the conversation. But they live across the way from each other. And he put on her on a board in her um <laughs> in her yard. He drew sagging breasts. <laughs> oh my god, that part had me cracking up. I'm saying he drew sagging breasts. And she was upset. She called Mayor. Mayor comes over and sees it. And she said, I know it was him. And her husband was like, we don't know that yet. And they said, let's check the security camera. So she goes and checks the security camera. Mayor looks at it, sees that he did it. And he puts up his middle fingers at the, at, at the old lady's house. And she deletes it. You know what? <laughs> She needs to cut. That lady needs to really chill out. She does. She needs to chill out. So, it was a fun, ep you know, it was a good episode. It's it's building up. I like that. It's building. It's good that it's building up. Um, I didn't want to give too much. I just wanted to come on here and give you a quick review, quick recap. It's building up. I'm loving the build up. I'm loving the show. Um, but I'm just very disappointed in Mayor. I am very disappointed in her because she could have did what about this differently. And now she's jeopardized her job. She's jeopardized her job. And that, and that, you know, come on. You can't do that. You still have to play by the rules. Okay. I understand that's her grandson and all of that. But she still has to play by the rules. Okay. She still has to play by the rules. All right, so I did see a little peek of what was going on for episode four. Um, you know, I'm gonna give you a little bit of it. Is Mayor um is forced to take a back seat on the case, which we know she's on administrative leave. Um, 
Zabel presses a local priest about the vague circumstances that prompted his transfer to the parish. So we see him talking to Deacon Mark about and asking him why were you transferred? What's going on there? And I think he's going to get to the root of it. I think he's going to really find out what happened. So then it shows that Dawn receives an anonymous call, okay, that gives her hope that Katie might still be alive, but guess what? It's asking for money. I think in the in the um it asks for eight thousand dollars. So it's she's at the person that has her daughter Katie, who's been missing for a year, is asking for money. It's it's so much going on. A lot is going to be going on. A lot is going to be going on here. So we know that Mayor is now seeing a counselor. She needs to. She really needs to see her counselor. We know that Dylan didn't die. We know that Frank is Frank and Dylan are taking a paternity test. Um, we also know that um, Mayor is still going out with Richard. And we do know that Deacon Mark is public enemy number one. He's suspect number one because I think he did something to that girl. And he might just be in the connection with Dawn daughter i don't know i got a strange feeling that he's connected some kind of way but it's either he's working by himself or he's working with someone i don't know i'm just throwing it out there all right you guys that's all i have for right now let me know in the comment section what do you think do you watch this show if you do i want to know your thoughts and opinions about this episode and i will talk to you soon